Hey guys, welcome to Define Agile. This is Anatoly and in this channel we're talking everything Agile and Agile tools. Today we're talking about Jira and I'm going to answer the question I'm going to ask the most, how to track time in Jira efficiently. If you know Jira well, you know that time tracking is not done so well in Jira and I always refer people to some add-ons. Today I'm going to talk about the add-on that I really, really like. This video is sponsored by a time tracker app that in my opinion allows one of the best time tracking capabilities for Jira. I'm going to show you how to set it up. I'm going to show you how to track time efficiently. I'm going to show you how to create amazing reports and a second video right after this, I'm going to show you how to configure permissions so that managers can see time of all the people while developers, let's say, can see only their time. Let's get to it. First of all, how to set up a time tracker app. I have already set it up, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. You go to apps, you go to explore more apps. Once you're here, just type time tracker in your search bar, click enter. Here we go. And the first one is time tracker, time tracking and reporting for Jira, which is one of the oldest time tracking app in the market. It has great reviews, lots of installs. It also has this cloud fortified badge that I love. It means that it adheres to a security um, principles of Atlassian. It also does consistent reliability checks and they offer 24 hour support response time, which means that if you have an issue, they will respond in 24 hours. Many don't do that and you get, can get really stuck with some bugs. So these guys really take care of their customers, which I really like. If you click on time tracker app, you can read some description. It describes what it does. And uh, if you want to try it out, there's a free trial. I already added it, but for you, it will be start a free trial. It is a paid app and I want to show you the pricing. The good part is that if you're a very small team, up to 10 users, it is completely free. But I know some of you are price conscious. So let me show you the pricing structure as well. So here's the pricing page. If you're just starting out, if you have uh, 10 users or less, it's completely free for you. If you want to try it on some instance that doesn't have a lot of users, you can do it as well, completely free. If you are a big organization, let's say you have 100 users in your Jira, it costs you only $40 a month, which is very reasonable. You see it has 2,135 installs, which means a lot of people are using it. So that also is very, very good sign. Now let's go and see the app. So I already have an app, but if you click the button, try it for free, it will take a little bit of time for you to set it up. And once it says success, you go to apps and you go to time tracker. So here is a time tracking UI. When you first come here, you will see an onboarding pop-up where you can select multiple things. If you select everything by default is no problem because you can change it later. It's also available in this preferences on the top left menu. So I click on it and I can see the default date. I set, a, I set as a current date, working hours. I say it as from eight to nine, but set up your working hours. First day of the week for me, it's Monday. You can set up the date format, time format, time span and estimates format. I left it as default by Jira because I'm used to that. And then you can have notifications about future work logs, which means if selected, you'll be notified when you log work on a future date. So you can play with that. Uh, you can leave it as it is, but uh, you always can change it. So no worries about that. Let's go back to time tracker. Here's a timeline UI, which I think is very intuitive. On the top, it has days of the week, with the uh, amount of time tracked per every day and then the total per week, total per month. You can easily go to today's date. There's a calendar, weekends are marked red. You can go for your months. You can go back in time. So it's very intuitive. If you want to modify how this looks, you also click on three dots and you can select sort order of start time. You can have issue picker grouping different ways. 
uh, work log views you can if you don't like let's say description field you can get rid of it you can enable auto fill which is pretty cool it will give automatically fill in duration i actually love that feature there's also working hours you can change them here and then you have a today's date a timeline uh, which is very convenient because it allows you to see uh, how you work do you have any gaps in your work it shows it to you with the green line on it i'll show you it in a second then you can go down if you want to do uh, time tracking for uh, previous dates saturday and sunday are grayed out because those are weekends i selected it when i was setting up the onboarding of time tracker uh, let's track some time so show you how it works first i usually select an issue and let's say create a sign up page what i really like about description is that it allows me to say what exactly to work on when i was working on that issue for example i worked on sign up page um, header and then I did it for 30 minutes and then I click plus. This button is also really cool. Let's say you have a repeating work lock. Let's say you have a daily stand up every day and you don't want to put it every day because it happens every day. So you can just click here every day and it will create a work lock on a daily basis so it can save you a lot of time you have repeating meetings maybe agile ceremonies or anything like that definitely very very useful uh, see the timeline now it appears as a green so let's create another one the cool hack i want to show you that as a developer of me really loves it you can use shortcuts keyboard shortcuts like tab so let's say sign up page footer then i click tab i can select issue recently worked on it pre-fills me something that i already selected before which is very intuitive i click on that i go to duration let's say 30 minutes again and then i click on tab then i click on enter and it appears so i don't even have to use mouse which for developers are very very useful then the other cool hack that i really like let's say you have um, you have a task but you don't have an issue associated to, with it yet let's say somebody told you today you need to work on sign up page logo but there's no issue created yet but you still want to log it so what you do is you leave issue blank uh, you can leave duration blank or you can fill it in then you click on the plus again and here we go you see the icon that says planned work log. So it will not appear in a JIRA ticket as a track time, but it's just for you to know that, okay, something is happening. And once you have issue filled in, a duration filled in, then it will appear on a JIRA issue. Speaking about JIRA issues, let me show you how this is all look inside of a JIRA issues as well. There's a very convenient uh, link button so you can open this issue right from the screen. I click on it. Here we go. So you can see a couple new things in this UI. First of all, the time tracker UI, if you click on it, it will populate the time tracker widget. And this is really cool because it allows you to see um, who worked on what. So if many people worked on this issue, you can click and see what they did, when they worked, so there's five developers working on it. It's uh, an easy way to see the work log. Let's say I'm a new developer. I wanna look at this issue and I'm not sure what should I work on. Maybe I should work on a header, but I see that Anatoly already worked on a sign up page header. So I would need to talk to Anatoly to make sure that he didn't complete it or that I can help. So it's very easy to see who worked on what very very useful you can log your work right from here you can click on it it creates a pop-up then you can select duration let's say one hour 30 minutes um sign up page menu i click save i can also log another like if i do that another one will appear right after it, the empty one so it's easy to log multiple ones so here we go. You see that it appear right here, sign up page menu. 
Um, so it's very easy to log the work. If I wanna show only my work, I can click on that. And if there's like five developers working on it, you will be able to filter it pretty easily. And then when you click on work log, you can also see all of this. Now, if you look at the right, you see that the time tracking is logged on the right inside of a Jira. This is a default Jira time tracker, so it's in integrated with it. But you also have this time tracker field. When you click on it, you also have estimated remaining and logged in here. You can log your work from this screen as well. So there are multiple ways to log your work, which is very convenient. Now let's go back to the time tracker app and I'm going to show you some more cool things. So here we are, you see that our sign up page menu is logged in here as well. By the way, the other cool feature is if you want to do a bulk update work log, you can click on the button and you can do a bunch of actions. If you want to delete everything, you can do it right from here very useful if you need to do bulk actions. Also, you can duplicate your work log. If let's say you're working on sign up header twice this day and you just want to duplicate it, it's easy to do. If you want to split it into separate ones, uh, let's say you want to be more specific, which part of header you worked in, you can do it. You can also delete right from here. So this is a very good view. I think it's very intuitive for people like me who like to have everything in one place and don't like to go from one Jira issue to another. This is a game changer. But that's not it. The other cool feature is a calendar view, uh, which I'm sure you like. It's for people who are more visual, who like to see things on calendars. Um, here we go. Let's click on the calendar on the uh, left panel. So here we see all our workloads in a calendar view and it's very convenient. You can drag them around. Let's say you thought that you did it at eight o'clock, but you really did it at 11. You can just drag and drop it and it appears at 11. Or let's say there's another issue you want to add and you want to add it to calendar. You can go and add something, just click on authentication, drag and drop it. You can drag and drop it in the future, in the past, anywhere here. So I drag and drop to Monday, October 3rd, and then it already opens me the pop-up. I can just say word on authentication password. Click save. Here we go. Word authentication password appeared right there. If at some point I'm like, no, I think it wasn't one hour, maybe it was two hours, I could just drag and drop it. It reminds me a lot of Google Calendar, which I like very much. So I think they did a really great job in the drag and dropping. Um, it looks really cool. You can also see the total for the week. You can see again today, the calendar. You can change this view if you want it to be not per week, but let's say per day. You can switch to day. It will show on the top what is the total per day. You can go for month if you into that as well. It will show you the total per month and everything you did. So it's very convenient and uh, such a good alternative way to see all your work logs. Uh, there's also filters. You can group things by all issues, recent, assigned and watched. The search, you can search for anything and it appears and then as always three dots so you can modify things so it's very intuitive done very well with a good design thinking in mind i really like it i don't have any issues finding things in here i think it's done really good the last but not least is reports uh, this is for managers who want to create reports on what was worked on, who worked on what, but also maybe for people who have um, external HR tool and they want to export their timesheet into CSV, Excel, change them a little bit and then import them to those tools, they can do that as well. 
So let's go to reporting and check it out. So here is a report UI. Uh, there's a bunch of filters you can select. You can select particular users if you want, groups. Uh, you can also select projects, uh, create a report for a particular projects. And of course, timeline today, this week, this month, everything is very intuitive. So let's create our report. Here we go. Also very customizable. You want to add some columns like project name or issue type. You can do that. It adjusts very quickly. So then you're able to export it all in Excel or CSV with all fields, current fields. So you can select the view um, you want to export. Very convenient. The other one is summary which gives you a bird's eye view on what's happening. So we see that uh, unassigned person, uh, I did not assign myself an issue before I tracked the time. So unassigned person was working for one day and one hour on unauthenticated and then uh, create sign up page two hours or 30 minutes. You have status, uh, it's very good. And then you can group by many things. Let's say I wanna see by user instead of by issue, it can give me that. I want to see by project, it can give me that as well. This is actually a really good view when you want to see how much time do we spend per project uh, in this time period, which projects take most of our time, or let's say we want to see which issues take the most of our time or want to say who worked the most, who should we give a race today? Anatoly is four hours, 30 minutes. We definitely should give a race to this guy. And then of course you can export it all in Excel and CSV. The other one is timesheet. So this is good for yourself or also it's a really nice view for anyone who creating any type of reports that need to present to management because there's multiple ways you can work with it. Their groupings are really good. If you want to group, let's say, just by issue, you can do that. If you want to add another dimension to that, if you want to group by issue and user, so let's say me and somebody else are working on it, you'll see that as well. Again, exporting Excel, CSV. If you want to change a bunch of things here, you can do that as well with the free dots. And finally, if you are a person who likes charts, they have charts for you too. So they have uh, two types of charts right now, pie charts and bar charts. So let's say we want to see on a graph which projects takes most of our time. So we say uh, W2 or which issues takes most of our time. We see that the uh, create sign up page took two hours and 30 minutes while uh, uh, V28 authentication took two hours. So you can compare that as well. Gives you a very good view. You can take a screenshot of that, put in your presentation, you're ready to go with your slides. You'll be completely fine. All right, guys, those are the quick overview of what Time Tracker app can do. I really like it. I think it's very intuitive. It doesn't have uh, a lot of useless things, but it's they really focused on getting usability well and creating only features that people would need. And I really like it. I highly recommend you guys try it out. And if you like the video, please subscribe and like because this is the way that we can spread it to more and more people. I'll leave the link to the app in the description below. This video is sponsored by Time Tracker app and I really appreciate them for allowing me to review their amazing app. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.